Have you ever wondered how to make some income on the side in a way that fits into your existing life? Something you can do that doesn't require getting another job, but relatively easy where you can earn decent money? It's certainly a topic I've given a lot of thought to, and after looking around for a while, I finally settled on trying to sell print-on-demand products on Etsy. So how's it going, and what have I learned? In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Etsy so you can see why it's so compelling, and then share five things about the reality of selling print-on-demand products that I wish I knew before getting started. Things you won't hear anywhere else that may change how you think about selling on Etsy. I'll discuss them more or less in order of importance, building up to the last one being most important. And at the end, I'll give you my current thinking on whether or not Etsy is a good side hustle opportunity. Now, I'm a software company chief financial officer with an MBA. I've got a ton of business experience. When evaluating a business opportunity, I try to think about it from all the angles. With a side hustle business, one of the main things I'm thinking about is, can I build some kind of a product once and then sell it over and over again with little additional work? After the initial investment of time, I want passive income. Having looked into it some, Etsy seemed like it could work. My interest was in selling print-on-demand products, which Etsy does a lot of, so I moved ahead. I did how-to research on best practices and spent at least 50 hours loading up an Etsy store with products to sell. Through all this, I've learned a lot. For those of you who don't know what Etsy is, it's an e-commerce marketplace. Sellers can open online stores inside Etsy's marketplace and list their products for sale. Part of why Etsy is a compelling place to sell is because it helps the seller in creating and sourcing products to sell and in getting your products in front of potential customers. And they have a lot of potential customers. Etsy is one of the largest e-commerce marketplaces with over 460 million visits in February, 2023, which compares very favorably to the other marketplaces. For a little bit of context, Etsy is an American e-commerce company founded in 2005 that owns several marketplace platforms, including Etsy.com. By 2015, the company had grown enough to become a public company traded on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Etsy had $2.6 billion in revenue in 2022, and the company is now valued at $13.5 billion. In 2022, the Etsy.com e-commerce marketplace had gross merchandise sales on the platform of $11.8 billion. Etsy.com's marketplace metrics are pretty impressive. On the platform, shoppers, which they call buyers, can find a large assortment of handmade, customized, personalized, vintage, and craft supply products from all over the world. As of the end of 2022, Etsy.com had 89.4 million buyers and 5.4 million active sellers. There were more than 100 million items listed for sale on the Etsy.com marketplace. My interest is print on demand, which is a made to order product, of the 2022 sales on the Etsy platform, about 26% were from customer made-to-order merchandise. Lastly, Etsy has a big international presence. In 2022, 45% of Etsy sellers were located outside the United States, and 45% of the merchandise sold on the platform involved an international transaction. So products on Etsy get in front of a worldwide audience of shoppers. You can probably see now why I decided to move ahead with Etsy. It's huge. But of course, reading about something and doing that thing can be quite different. I learned a lot. So with the benefit of experience, here are the five things about Etsy that I wish I knew before I got started. One, a lot of YouTubers are doing videos about how to do well on Etsy, making it sound very promising that if you follow their advice, you'll make good sales on the platform. And yes, some people do quite well on Etsy. But what has become a lot clearer to me is that for every seller who does well on Etsy, far more sell little or nothing at all. Digging into Etsy's annual report, they highlight that they have 5.4 million active sellers. That sounds great, right? However, they define an active seller as those who sold an item or incurred a bill charge in the last 12 months. Incurred a bill charge, what's that? Well, that would be someone, for example, that Etsy billed for some kind of service, even if that seller never sold anything on Etsy. Having been an equity analyst, I'm pretty attuned to the language that companies use and what they do and don't disclose. Usually, companies don't disclose things that don't reflect well in their business. Here, 
Etsy doesn't disclose how many people have shops on Etsy but sell nothing. Also, they define active sellers as both people who did make sales plus those who did not make sales but were simply charged a fee by Etsy. By combining these two very different things, they effectively hide how many sellers on the platform make any sales at all. They do tell us, however, that for the 5.4 million active sellers on the site, the gross merchandise sales per active seller in 22 was only $2,169. It's not very much. They also note, in their words, that their gross merchandise sales are concentrated in their most active buyers and sellers. This means that even though the average gross merchandise sales per active seller was $2,169, most of the sales on the platform are taking place in the more successful shops. I infer that probably a large portion of active sellers on Etsy actually sell little or nothing. Making a quick pause here, Etsy has active sellers, but I have you, my wonderful audience, who are my active listeners. If you're enjoying this video, please take a quick moment and hit the like button and consider subscribing too. Your action tells YouTube to spread the word and helps the channel grow. While you're doing that, let's watch this cute kitten video. Thank you kindly for your support. Now getting back to our discussion list, number two, Etsy is promoted as an easy place to set up shop and start selling. Technically, that's absolutely true. It's not hard to get on Etsy and put up an item for sale. However, the practical truth seems to be that to actually succeed in making regular sales on Etsy requires a significant investment of time. You need to list many, many items, some people suggest hundreds, before your shop is likely to start getting sales. There's a few reasons for this. One is, there's a lot of competition for buyers on Etsy. Remember, there are 100 million items listed for sale on the platform by 5.4 million sellers. Another reason is you really don't know which items will succeed in selling and which won't. So you make up for that by listing many items and hoping some of them find buyers. The long and short of it is you'll end up spending a lot of time putting up many listings and each listing to have any chance of selling will need to be of high quality with good pictures and descriptions and be properly optimized for SEO. All of this takes time. Three, fees. Fees can add up. To price your products to sell to profit, you have to get the fees correct in your pricing model. When setting your prices, be sure that they more than cover all of the fees. Etsy charges 20 cents per item as a listing fee. A listing lasts for four months. Translation, if you list 100 items on Etsy, it will cost you $20 every four months or $60 per year just to keep the listings up, even if you sell nothing. And remember, most items won't sell anything. That means the profits from the ones that you do sell has to cover the listing fees for those that don't sell. Now, if an item sells, Etsy will charge you a transaction fee of 6.5% plus a payment processing fee of 3% for a total of 9.5% of the combined gross price plus shipping fee that you charge the customer, plus another 25 cents as part of the payment processing fee. In addition, and this one is really easy to miss, Etsy might charge you an Etsy advertising fee of 15%. This might hit you out of the blue. Etsy advertises off their site to try to attract customers to their listings. If someone off Etsy clicks on an ad that Etsy rads somewhere out on the internet, and that person comes to Etsy and buys your product, then Etsy will charge you a fee of 15% of the gross price plus shipping. Now, you can opt out of this program, but if you don't, then by default, you are participating. It's a little hard to adjust your pricing for this because you have no idea how often this might happen. So the smart thing to do is just bump up your prices a little to account for the fact that this may happen on occasion. Lastly, you might be charged VAT fees for value-added tax on some of your international sales. It depends on which country a customer lives in. You'd have to do research on this one to understand it better. I just wanted to make sure you're aware of it so it's not a surprise. Again, model your prices so you can set them properly to allow you to make a profit. It's really not fun to make sales, but lose money at it. Number four, sales tax. Etsy collects and remits sales tax for most states. I live in New York, and New York is one of the states for which Etsy collects and remits sales tax. So at first, I thought this meant that I didn't have to worry about sales tax. 
That's true, but there's a small but important twist. If you use a supplier to provide the product that you then resell on Etsy, there are two transactions. First, you buy a product from the supplier. You will pay sales tax on this purchase. Second, you sell the finished product to your customer. Etsy charges them sales tax and pays it to the state. So if you don't want to pay sales tax yourself when you buy the product from your supplier, then you need a resale certificate. This certificate will allow you to buy items that you intend to resell without paying sales tax on your purchase. To be able to use a resale certificate, at least in New York, first you have to register with New York State as a sales tax vendor. They call it here a Certificate of Authority to Collect Sales Tax. And only once you have this in hand can you issue a resale certificate to the supplier that you're buying from. The catch is, once you've registered with the state for the Certificate of Authority to Collect Sales Tax, you now have to make regular sales tax filings with the state, even though Etsy is collecting and paying them the tax that's owed on sales to your customers. So basically, we have to file a zero sales tax return, meaning you file a return, but on it, you just tell the state that you don't owe them anything. The point is, this is an administrative hassle that I wish I knew about in advance. It wouldn't have stopped me, but at least it wouldn't have been a surprise either. Number five, this is the biggie. Think about Etsy in terms of a simple equation. Ultimately, other than the fun and rewards of selling your creations on Etsy or any other platform, it's a business. You invest time and money, and hopefully you profit from it. So here's the equation. How much profit can you make on Etsy in a year? The key is we're talking about profit, not sales. You know that all the videos on YouTube are using sales with titles like make $5,000 per month on Etsy. That's sales when all that matters is profit. Your sales might be $5,000, but from that you have to deduct for the cost of the product and shipping and Etsy fees and any advertising you buy, plus any other expenses you might incur. So how much is left is profit? Divide your profit by the amount of time you spend doing all this. This answer is effectively your hourly wage for the time you spend selling on Etsy. Let me give you a simple example. Assume you sell $5,000 in revenue in a year on Etsy. Remember, the average is about $2,200 per year. And assume your profit margin after all expenses are deducted was 20%. That means your profit on $5,000 of sales was $1,000. Now assume that in order to sell $5,000 of product, you had to put up 100 product listings on Etsy. And assume that each listing took you only an hour to prepare. This means you spent 100 hours preparing the 100 listings on Etsy. For simplicity, let's assume you spent no other time getting set up in Etsy or engaging in marketing activities on other platforms to drive traffic to your store or in answering customer questions or in researching suppliers to use in your store or in buying supplies yourself and making the product yourself <laughs> and in researching what your prices should be. There's a lot that goes into this. So obviously, I'm potentially leaving out a lot of other time that you may actually spend on this endeavor in order to get sales and make your product. But we're keeping it simple. So divide the $1,000 in profit by the 100 hours of work you did, and you'll find you only made $10 an hour. And like I said, we left out a lot of other time you may be spending on this. I should point out, though, in fairness to Etsy, this is not just an Etsy issue. It's probably relevant to any number of online e-commerce platforms if you sold on your own website. So having covered these five items, where does that leave us regarding Etsy? I've told you why it's probably harder to succeed on Etsy than some people would have you believe. If you do choose to launch a store on Etsy, if you take it seriously, spending the time to research and find good suppliers and making good designs and doing proper SEO and setup of your store, and doing best practices for marketing using Etsy and other websites to drive traffic to your store, and putting up many, many listings of products for sale, then you may find some level of success, maybe even a lot. But if you're just gonna dabble and only put up a few items, it seems that you're most likely not gonna make any sales. It doesn't appear to be a quick and easy side hustle, at least not initially. It seems to require quite a bit of time and dedication before you'll see results. So, like anything else in life, it comes down to whether or not you're willing to put in the time and work. If you do, maybe it'll work. But the data from Etsy suggests to me, at least, 
it's not worth it for the average seller. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to see more videos covering interesting topics in personal finance and entrepreneurship. See you in the next one.